All right, welcome to episode two of Selling RVA. It is May 15th. It is a little after four in the morning. We're getting out of Dodge. Um, it has been uh, about two months since our last episode of uh, Selling RVA aired, and life has been crazy, which is why <laughs> we are getting out of here. We're gonna go on vacation. Yep. So we're headed to Miami. Uh, yeah. We'll catch up with you uh, there when we get there and um, tell you everything we've been up to. Yep. All right, so we're back from vacation refreshed and recharged. We really needed that vacation because business has been crazy. May was shaping up to be our best month ever with over 3.5 million in closings, which to put it in perspective is a little less than what we sold the entire year in 2017. We bought the largest bottle of Vuv to celebrate, but we might not be opening it just yet because now June is slated to be even better with a total of $5.5 million in closing. To say we've been busy would be an understatement. And while we've been busier than we've ever been before, we just want to say, Andy, we're never too busy for Bravo. <laughs> Since we haven't heard from you, we assume you lost our number. That must be so what here it, was. it is. Give us a call. <laughs> Seriously, call us. <laughs> The market is hyper competitive and getting buyers under contract on a home is no simple task because for every house listed, it feels like there are 30 different people gunning for it. We are going to share our secret with you on how we've gotten so many of our buyers under contract on resale homes recently. But before we do that, we're going to rewind to where we left off from our last episode. At the beginning of this year, the housing inventory was the lowest it has ever been. It's because of this drastic lack of homes for sale that created the multiple offer feeding frenzy that is the current real estate market. Despite its challenges throughout 2021, we had massive success with our go-to strategies for winning multiple offers. But at the beginning of 2022, something changed, and honestly, we were getting beat up out there. It was rough. For real. For the past two years, it was pretty much common practice to list a home on a Thursday or Friday, allow showings through the weekend, and then review offers on Sunday or Monday. In MLS, it would state when the offers were due and when they were going to be presented to the seller. Well, not every seller or listing agent stuck to their own self-imposed timeline. For instance, there was a townhome in Mechanicsville that we showed virtually to a relocation client. They loved it and they decided they want to put an offer in on it. The seller was supposed to be reviewing offers on Monday evening. So I called the agent on Monday morning to ask standard questions like when do they want to close? What appliances convey? Do they want to rent back? You know, etc. And the agent said the seller had just accepted an offer. Then there were other times it was even worse than that and houses were selling before we could even get our foot in the door. So here it is on Saturday afternoon. We were on our way to a showing and we say we're on our way to a showing uh, because Taylor just got an automated email that said our showing was canceled because the sellers accepted an offer. Early. Early. They were supposed to be reviewing on Monday. Again, today is Saturday. Yeah. And here we are, five mm -hmm. minutes from the showing. Uh, getting an automated message that yeah. said it's been canceled. Not even a call from the listing agent, which again, it, it just, it's so it's aggravating yeah. because why not just let me know? Why yeah. not call me and say, hey, you've, I know you've got a client, you're about to show the house. Let me know if they're interested ASAP yeah. or... Or can you get in early? Yeah, can you get in early? Because or... I might have been able to rearrange my day to yeah. accommodate the showing, but I had no clue. There was no warning from them oh, we have an offer in hand. Yeah. Why not at least tell me that and say, yeah. tick tock? Yeah, it's a 30 minute drive. So, you know, to be five minutes away yeah. and you know, for our clients too, yeah. it's, it's frustrating. So we're frustrated for yeah. sure. And I know our clients are, um, we gotta go tell them, hey, sorry, you don't even get a chance at this one. Um, and and yeah. this is the second time this has happened to this set of clients. So yeah. it's, everybody's frustrated. Yeah, oh wow. Yeah. On to the next. Yep. It's really frustrating to lose before we even get a chance to try. For that reason, Taylor and I always try to be one of the first ones through the door and we always try to submit our offers ASAP or at least tell the agent to expect one and please do not accept anything early without giving us a heads up. Submitting an offer to the listing agent before the seller accepts an offer early is just the first obstacle, and that's just step one. After that, we still have to compete against the multiple offers from all the other buyers trying to get the house. And for a while there, we kept coming in second or third place. And I always say there aren't any second or third place prizes. Mm -mm. Speaking of second place, we showed this home virtually to some clients relocating from Italy. Can I just interject? Yes, you heard that right. We have clients from Italy. We have officially gone international, which is really cool. Yeah, we never imagined we would have an international presence. We are stoked about that. 
but back to the house. <laughs> this is what we call a unicorn because it was pretty much brand new construction in an area of Richmond City that is full of homes that are 50 years old. This home was listed at 899,000, which is pretty high for that area. But again, this one was a unicorn. So our clients offered $1 million with really great terms regarding the appraisal and the inspection, but sadly we didn't win it. It actually just closed and the winning bid was $1,025,000. So we were super close, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. <laughs> Ooh. Around the same time, we had some California relocation clients who submitted an offer on this home in the Glen Allen Innsbruck area. It was listed at $399,000 and it was priced very well. It was completely move-in ready and in great shape. We wrote a super competitive offer at just a little above $470,000 with great terms waiving the appraisal and inspection. But again, we came in second place. The winning offer was $481,000 and all cash. So that one just wasn't ours to win. <laughs> Sometimes we didn't even make it on the podium and we would just get blown out of the water. There was this house in Fox Hall out in Short Pump that I showed. It was listed at $875,000 and it was simply stunning. There were comps listed at similar prices that were selling $100,000 to $150,000 above asking, but this home was a lot nicer than those. So we suggested to our buyers to offer somewhere between $1.1 to $1.15 million, but they didn't want to. We ended up offering $1 million, which was still $125,000 above asking. So don't get me wrong, it definitely was not a bad offer at all. Well, the listing agent had other thoughts and told us it was the worst <laughs> offer they received. I checked on this house and it closed recently with a final sales price of $1.271 million, which was $396,000 above ask. Yeah. As you can imagine, doing this over and over again becomes frustrating and tiresome, not just for us, but for our buyers as well. This is why new construction made a lot of sense for a while. We were gonna title this episode The Last Game in Town and focus mostly on our new construction sales because we have so many. We have clients building with a couple of different builders and all in various stages of construction. Since our last episode, two of our clients and now neighbors closed on their homes in Carver Oaks. And we have three more closings very soon. One with Main Street in Newmarket Estates, one with Shell in Forest Hills section of Magnolia Green, and then we have a beautiful custom home being built by Perrin Crest in the Banyan Cove section of Magnolia Green. This one is gonna be a stunner, and we'll definitely show you the final result in an upcoming episode, because it's too pretty to keep to ourselves. <laughs> Now, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows with new construction, and there are definitely some cons related to building. First, you have to wait, and more than likely, there will be some type of delay with the build because of supply chain issues. <laughs> Additionally, interest rates continue to rise, and since you don't know exactly when the house is going to be done, you can't lock in your rate right away. And lastly, we've had some very frustrating experience of the Main Street homes lately. Yeah. Part of their contract states that they can increase the price of your home prior to the start of construction, and we've had three clients get hit with price increases very recently. It seems like lately Main Street doesn't really have it together and there have been some other issues that have started to pop up. So if you're thinking about building with them, be sure to reach out to us first so we can give you the lowdown on what to expect. So for a while there, pretty much the only forward momentum we were getting was with new construction and with our listings. Since our last episode, we actually got our very first million dollar listing, which was super exciting. <laughs> this is a waterfront home located at Lake Anna, which is a 13,000 acre lake located a little over an hour away from Richmond. This area draws buyers from all over, including DC and Northern Virginia, Richmond and Charlottesville. Now, the secondary vacation home market is a little different because these purchases are a want and not a need. So we figured it would take a little bit longer to sell, and that turned out to be exactly the case. It took a little over a month to find the right buyer, but we were happy to report that it is now under contract. We actually received the offer while we were on vacation in Miami, which is a tradition. Every time we go on vacation, we sell a house. We should probably take more vacations. <laughs> yeah. We had two other listings that we sold since the last episode, both which sold within the first weekend on market. Greyhaven was a newer construction home built by DR Horton in the Watermark subdivision. All we had to do to get this home ready was to add some color to the walls with fresh paint and get it staged. The end result looked great. Then there was Calvin's Pond Trail. This was another newer construction home, but this one was built by Main Street Homes and located in the Aston neighborhood in Palatan. Calvin's Pond Trail was amazing. We would have lived there in a heartbeat because it's what so many buyers are looking for. Privacy with a large yard, move-in ready, and there was high-speed internet, which isn't always a given anytime you look at homes on any type of acreage. Both of these listings sold above asking price with appraisal waivers and both offers waived their right to do an inspection. 
Waiving the right to do an inspection seemed to be the only missing ingredient in our offers and why time and time again, we kept coming in second and third place. Since all of our recent listings were receiving offers waiving their right to do an inspection, we knew this is where the market was. But we still didn't want to believe it, and we were hesitant to start recommending that our buyers should waive their right to have an inspection. We tried every other flavor imaginable. We would put in our offers that we would ignore any single item defect with an estimated cost to cure of $2,000 or less, or that we would go as is, which is when you do an inspection and it's a take it or leave it scenario, but you don't ask the seller for any repairs. But if you can put yourself into a seller's shoes, you can see why we weren't winning, because a seller will jump at the chance to accept the offer that isn't even going to perform an inspection. Despite knowing what we needed to do to win, we just couldn't bring ourselves to tell our buyers to just blindly waive their right to an inspection, but we knew we had to adapt. Our eureka moment came in early March. We figured that if the only buyers winning homes were waiving their right to do an inspection, then we bet home inspectors weren't very busy. <laughs> no. Turns out we were right and home inspectors were thinking the same thing we were, adapt or die. So we started bringing inspectors with us to our showings. They would then perform miniature inspections focusing on the big ticket items like the roof, the attic, crawl space and foundation, HVAC, and whatever else they could get to during the showing time frame. By bringing an inspector with us, we could then waive our right to do an inspection and have a fighting chance against the other multiple offers, all the while still protecting our buyers. Now we tell our clients this isn't a full-blown inspection and the inspector will probably miss some of the smaller items, but at least you're protected in regards to the larger, more costly issues. Our clients loved this solution, and from then on, it was game on. This was a huge turning point for us. Since implementing this strategy, we've had massive success, and in the past two months alone, we've gotten 11 buyers under contract on their future homes. I am happy to say that both the clients that submitted offers on the houses we mentioned earlier in the episode are now under contract as well. Our California buyers got this awesome home in Glen Allen and are scheduled to close in early June. Our Italy buyers got this breathtaking house in the Salisbury area with one of the most beautiful backyards I've ever seen. I mean, who has a bocce ball court in their backyard? Our Texas relocation clients are now under contract on this beauty out in Goochland, and the list goes on and on. So despite how competitive it is out there, we are having our two best months ever, and we have you to thank for it. Seriously, thank you so much to everyone who's reached out to us to help them buy or sell a home. Your support means the world to us. As exciting as all of this was, we have even more exciting news to share with you on our next episode. So be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out. If you'd like to hire us, you can reach us at 804-357-8490 or taylor at jeffersongroverva.com. Thanks for being here with us today, and we'll see you next time. Bye.